Good evening, and thank you for being with us today. My name is Tom McCulloch, and I'm an assistant director within the, Fed within the Office of Federal Agency Program. Ms. Bannon, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My name is Tom McCulloch, and I'm an assistant director within the, Fed within the Office of Federal Agency Program at the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. I'm representing our chairman, Mr. Wayne Donaldson, who could not be present today due to medical reasons, and I'm substituting for Mr. Reed Nelson, director of my office, who was supposed to be here today but had a serious family emergency that took him out of the office and prevented him from attending. Also in attendance from the HHP is Ms. Catherine Kerr from my office and Ms. Lynn Richmond, a communication and public affairs specialist in the HHP. Thank you. The Advisory Council on Historic Preservation is an independent federal agency. We promote the preservation, enhancement, and productive use of the nation's historic resources, and we advise the President and Congress in the field of historic preservation policy. The HHP was created by the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966, and we oversee the Section 106 process of that act, which requires all federal agencies to consider the impact of their actions or undertakings on properties listed on or eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. We're here to carry out the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation's responsibility to comment to the Secretary of the Navy on the effects of their proposed increase of aircraft and aircraft operations on historic properties. Under Section 106 of the Act, the Secretary is required to take into account the effects of the projects and programs on properties listed on or eligible for the National Register and afford us, the ACHP, a reasonable opportunity to comment. The Section 106 consultation process was terminated on November 30th by the Navy, and the ACHP has 45 days from that notification to provide final advisory comments to the Secretary of the Navy. As is apparent from our agency's very name, our comments are confined to our area of responsibility, namely historic preservation issues as they relate to projects requiring federal assistance or approval. So I want to stress that the purpose of this meeting is to obtain input on the effects of the proposed increase in aircraft and aircraft operations on historic properties and possible steps that could be taken to address historic preservation issues. Testimony regarding issues beyond this limited scope is not germane to the Chairman's deliberations. I should note that a great deal of information already exists from years of consultation in consideration of this project, and that material will be considered in the Chairman's deliberative process. I would also note that the Chairman's final comments in this case are, as our name implies, advisory. The Secretary is required to personally consider them and respond to them prior to making his final decision on the project. However, they are in no way binding on the Secretary or any other federal official. The final Department of the Navy decision on the increase in aircraft and aircraft operations will be based on consideration of a broad range of issues that include, but are not limited to, Historic Preservation. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act does not mandate a specific outcome. It simply requires that historic preservation be taken into consideration when making final decisions. It's the responsibility of the Secretary to determine whether or not what conditions the Department, under what conditions the Department will carry out the project. <coughs> the ACHP will provide its final comments to the Secretary in a timely manner and no later than January 14, 2019 unless there's a lapse in our funding temporarily stops the clock. When the <laughs> We're waiting to hear. Who knows? <laughs> when the Secretary has received our comments, they become a matter of public record and will be shared. They will be posted on our website. We recognize that there is a significant frustration among some members of the community with past meetings hosted by the Navy, and we want to ensure those who are intending tonight that this meeting is in no way a continuation or substitution of those meetings. In carrying out our responsibilities to now provide advice to the Secretary of the Navy on the undertaking of its effects to historic properties, it's important that it be informed by the views of the public. I understand there have been concerns about the need for such a meeting. However, it is both usual and customary for the ACHP to seek public input through a meeting like this, and it is important that we understand your views on the case. Y'all have to live with the decision. To be clear, while the Navy has assisted us with securing the venue and offering us logistical support, this is an ACHP meeting 
This is not an AV meeting. We also wish to mention. We also wish to mention that at any point in the meeting, we believe anyone's safety is endangered, we will immediately bring the meeting to a close. Now Thank let's turn you. briefly to how this session will proceed. All statements will be made at the microphone here in the front. You must go to the microphone. Please be ready to speak immediately after the person preceding you. When you have 30 seconds remaining, the yellow warning sign will be raised by Kate. When the red sign of the panel appears, you've got to stop. We must be efficient to allow all those registered to speak to have that opportunity. Please note that there is a stenographer present to capture, statements, to capture the statements made today to assist us in processing the incident information. And it is our understanding that members of the public may be filming tonight's meeting. First, representatives from Naval Air Station Whitby Island and the Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation will have up to 10 minutes to offer their comments. Next. Consulting parties who have been invited to speak will have a maximum of three minutes to offer their comments. Then, those individuals who are pre-registered to speak will have two minutes each. For those of you who have just registered to speak, we will do our best to ensure that you have an opportunity to speak. Kate will call names from the roster, and will also call the name of the person who is scheduled to speak next. Both those individuals should move to the microphone, and be prepared to begin as soon as the speaker before them departs. If you are not in the microphone and ready to speak, we will proceed to the next speaker. We have forms and tables at the entrance for written comments, and your comments can also be emailed or faxed to the ACHP no later than 5 p.m. on Thursday, January the 3rd, 2019. We can give you the email address, which is Whitby Island Comment at ACHP.gov, and the fax number if you need that. I assure you that written comments carry as much weight as verbal comments and will be, all will be fully considered as we make some decisions and recommendations for the Navy. Please fill these out and give them the individual to the table by the entrance. We will not take any formal breaks. If you need to leave for the room for any reason, please do so in a courteous and non-disruptive manner. And if you've not already done so, please turn off or silence your electronics device. Okay, Kate? We will hear from the Department of the Navy, represented by Captain Matthew Arney. You have 10 minutes. Excuse me, Kathleen. I have a point of order. I'd like to know who is reporting us and if there's any media present. I am not given permission for this man to report me, and I have no idea who he is. I excuse me. This is a public place. I have a right to record you. If you have a problem with that, you need to leave this well, building immediately and do not come back. I, tell you, I, I will not answer that question unless the law enforcement officer instructs me to answer that question. Well, law enforcement, where are you? No, I ate him here. Hey, Joe, why don't you just... It's just a point of order. Point of order. It's a disruptive point of order and it will not be accepted. Joe, sweetie, you're not in charge. Okay, this is an ACHP meeting and I just like to know what right you have to record people. I have a right under nope. the U.S. Constitution to record a public meeting. I have a right under the First Amendment which says Specifically, Captain, please okay. correct me if I am wrong, well, sir. Be recorded. Thank you, William. Law enforcement officer. Please don't interrupt to me. You can record. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please move to the side, Joe. Then. You're welcome. Just to let everybody know, if you do not want to be recorded, um, please say so at the beginning of your time. Okay. Thank you. And what, what press were in the room? Thank and you. why does the Navy get first chance to speak? <laughs> well, at least well, there's two questions. Um, Lynn, do we have members of the media who are present? What media? What media, what media Joe? None of your business. <laughs> Again, please, this is your opportunity to talk to the ACHP about effects to historic properties. We've already said this once. We please please be courteous to everybody in this room. Secondly, this is the usual and customary format for how we handle these meetings. The lead federal agency is the Department of the Navy, and so they are given the first opportunity to speak. Captain Arney. Thank you. The Navy has been considering the congressional action to fund expansion of electronic attack capability to meet the challenges of our adversaries that we face as a nation. The Navy's decision requires an assessment of the expansion of the Growler community and its effect on historic properties. 
The process which brings us together this evening is the National Historic Preservation Act, Section 106 consultation. For this undertaking, the Navy's consultation has lasted many years and included periods for public comment. During the most recent phase, consulting on resolutions for adverse effects, consulting parties provided a variety of resolutions to consider. We have worked through an evolving draft memorandum as we sought to reach an agreement. Despite differing perspectives and opinions, the Navy has worked to remain fair to the process and to our partners in our shared community. Our duty in the Navy is to defend the country. We are fully aware that in carrying out that mission, we must care for the communities where we live and serve. We must consider the potential impacts of the Growler expansion on historic properties while we work with the community to find an agreement that supports our national defense requirements. Despite the hard work from all parties, we were not able to agree. The Navy preferred to reach an agreement and the decision to terminate was not entered lightly. The Navy remains committed to our communities, to the Section 106 process, and to resolving adverse effects. The Navy welcomes ACHP's recommendations, which will be informed by the public comments this evening. Thank you. Next, we will you hear from the Department of Archaeology and Historic Preservation, represented by Dr. Allison Brooks. You have 10 minutes. I'm Dr. Allison Brooks, and I am your State Historic Preservation Officer. And I am representing. Here we go, clapping. I represent the Office of Governor Jay Inslee. So, first of all, I would like to start and say on one hand, I can see where the Navy's saying we've been in consultation for some years, but I would also like to point out that it wasn't until late August of this year we started talking about mitigation. So there has to be some timeline perspective here. We didn't do APE till 2017. And I'm sorry, APE means area potential effect. So, one, we did not agree with their area of potential effect. We wrote you a letter and told you. We do not understand the 65 decibel contour line as an APE. It is clear that what happened was it goes from no one's flying to 117 decibels, which gets us to 65. That's not the effect. The effect is when the community and the people in historic homes and historic places hit 110 and 117, what that does to them. HUD guidelines clearly say that decibels should not exceed 65 and 75 decibels is harmful. We also heard clearly from Port Townsend that they were feeling the effects of the growler noise. We wanted them included in the area of potential effect, and we're told no. I would like to make the point that Port Townsend is a national historic landmark. There is an effect to Port Townsend. So we would have preferred a much larger area of potential effect and we still do not feel that the area potential effect is adequate. We really wanted to have mitigation for soundproofing and stabilization of historic structures. I realized that, as when I talked to Mayor Hughes, there could be more under NEPA, the National Environmental Policy Act, but you're right, this <coughs> work for historic structures. I would like to make the point, Federal Highway in Washington State DOT, under Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, was required to do noise mitigation for SR 520. When they uh, replaced the floating bridge, they put down rubberized asphalt all over the historic districts at our request to reduce the construction noise. We are working with Federal Highway now because they are raising the decibels for construction and we are amending the programmatic agreement again to reduce the noise for the historic districts. FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, they extended the runway at Boeing Field. They soundproofed the windows and the doors of the Georgetown Historic District. Both those projects went forward. They don't stop the projects, but both those agencies did mitigation for historic properties. I don't understand why the Navy doesn't have to. It seems that the National Historic Preservation Act asked federal agency to do mitigation we see the FAA doing mitigation. We see Federal Highway doing mitigation, Forest Service, BLM. So the idea that the Navy somehow gets to walk away doesn't seem to be in the spirit and the intent of Congress. The same law should apply to all federal agencies the same way. 
for you, I think we need better leadership on indirect effects. It's clear that the concept of noise, I would hear things, people say, well, it's just noise. So it's not just noise, it's 110 decibels of noise. And as you heard from me earlier, even the mining industry is starting to ask questions about indirect effects. I think we're going to need leadership from the Federal Advisory Council on what is appropriate mitigation for indirect effects. I also want to point something else. I'm going to quote 54 U.S. Code 302-303, Responsibilities of the State Historic Preservation Officer. In Section A, federal undertakings, well, so we consult with appropriate federal agencies in accordance with this division. This is the law. Federal undertakings that make historic property and the State Historic Preservation Officer, which is me, is supposed to set, tell you the content and sufficiency of any plans developed to protect, manage, reduce, or mitigate harm to a property. This implies that the federal agency, the Navy, has responsibility to take the state's position seriously. I, by law, am supposed to say what the adequacy of the proposed mitigation is. It's under Section 101 of the National Historic Preservation Act and in 54 U.S. Code 302-303. And I am telling you today their proposed mitigation was not sufficient. It is inadequate. And the law implies that they should try to meet a sufficient mitigation. under Section 106 like every other federal agency. Mitigation is the final result. It's the result of the mitigation responsibilities of federal agencies. Section 101 and Section 106 responsibilities under the National Historic Preservation Act require appropriate mitigation. We did not ask the Navy to do an incredible amount. Captain Arney, with all due respect, every time you asked Jim Baumgart from the governor's office and I to get you numbers, we got you numbers. And every time we brought new numbers, it became, bring me a rock. The numbers we brought, the calculations we brought, were never good enough. And that is extremely frustrating. How many mathematical equations can I give somebody and hear it's not good enough? And I want to close by saying something else. <coughs> look, at, look at this. This is neighbor versus neighbor in Washington State. This is not fair. Captain Arnie and the Admiral will move on in two years, but everybody here has to live together. You will go home tomorrow at 8 a.m. to Washington, D.C., and we will still be here. So the Navy doing mitigation is so critical to the lifestyle, to the historic properties, for neighbors and the Navy to be able to coexist. We ask for soundproofing. We ask for stabilization funds. We asked for an operations management plan, and I don't think we were out of range at all. I think we were fair, and that our, our requests should be properly considered, and the mitigation should be sufficient, just like it says in law. And if I have... I would like to cede my time to the mayor of Coopville, Mayor, mayor Molly Hughes. Can I cede my time to the mayor? <laughs> Just like in Congress, you can cede time. <laughs> represents the heart and soul of this area for many of the people here tonight. <laughs> it 40 years ago to champion congressional preservation of this amazing cultural landscape. It is my prayer that as experts in this field, you too will recognize the national significance of this rural landscape, the relative quiet and slower pace that is intrinsic to it. This area gained national designation due to its historic qualities, the setting, the feeling, the contributing features, 
all of which are, will be altered by a four-fold increase in practice flights at OLF. There is no way for the Navy to put a dollar value on these intangible qualities. EV's reserve doesn't have a price tag, but there is an opportunity here for you to recognize the scale of the adverse impact and to demonstrate respect for this local community's contributions and the four-way partnership that is built that has built the trust board and this community and that is what is charged with the management of the reserve. Adverse effect is just another way of saying that something significant will be lost when the action is proposed. The most effective mitigation could come from management of operations in a way that would minimize the proposed increases to growler flight noise and thus <clears throat> minimize the loss to this historic district. If not, then at a minimum, the local community should, direct, should directly benefit from the Navy's Section 106 mitigation by targeting historic public properties and local project priorities as identified through the Trust Board. There is no disagreement that the proposed increase of touch and go activity at the OLF will adversely impact the Central Whidbey Historic District. I do uh, disagree, however, on the boundaries of the area of potential effect which should be much broader than currently defined. The scope, and scale, the scope and scale of the noise impacts reach beyond the borders of Central Whidbey to Jefferson and San Juan counties. Those sister jurisdictions also have historic properties which will be adverse impact, adversely impacted by the increased flight proposed. Finally, I want to share my concerns that this process, though maybe well intended, certainly is and to follow federal law, to assist communities in reacting to federal actions has actually done more harm than good, in my opinion. Our island is more polarized and there is more distrust in this community than there was when it began last summer. This concerns me a great deal, and I do please hope that you will use your authority to change this direction and advise the Navy Section 106 mitigation to respond to the noise impacts and the locally identified historic priorities. Thank you very much for your time. Hughes, town of Coopville, you have three minutes. Please understand, if she has to stop talking, that cuts into her three minutes. So if you could please reserve your clapping until the end. I'm just saying she has three minutes, and if she stops, she loses that time. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to the beautiful town of Coopville. We are proud to be in the very heart of Edie's Landing National Historical Reserve. The town of Coopville understands that Section 106 deals strictly with adverse effects on, on historic properties. We agree with the Navy that increased growler operations will have an adverse effect. However, we disagree that those effects will, should be classified as limited. We also believe that the area defined as experiencing those adverse effects should include the entire central would-be historic <coughs> district, basically Evie's Reserve, rather than the very limited area identified by the Navy. The town of Coopville believes on behalf of our residents that no amount of money can resolve these adverse effects of increased operations in Central Whidbey. These, this includes the historic buildings, the historic use of land, the historic soundscape, and the historical <coughs> cultural landscape. All of these features are identified and protected by the Congress in the development of Central Whidbey Island Historic District and Evie's Landing National Historic Reserve. We would like the ACHP to recognize that some of the very characteristics we are protecting in this historic district such as the historic dark night skies and the protection of historic agricultural practices, which result in lower land development and a lower pop population base. Ironically, these historic features that we are protecting are exactly what the Navy is using to justify increasing the growler operations in Central Whidbey. Our work to preserve, sometime at great personal sacrifice, a rural community which provides an unbroken historical record should not be used as justification to increase growler operations. The only true mitigation of this adverse effect would be a significant decrease in the number of proposed growler operations in the reserve. Short of that, the town of Coopfield does recognize there is value in having mitigation efforts focus on the preservation of publicly used historic resources. Projects that have already been defined as a priority in our community. Projects representing the four partners in the reserve and the citizens that they represent, the citizens that live and work in the reserve. 
After dozens of hours spent in mitigation meetings in a four-month period of time, not a four-year period of time, that it appeared that the Navy was open to funding projects as mitigation. Several priority projects were offered. Um, the Ferry House, the Port of Coopville, and work at Fort Casey State Park. We felt that because all of these projects are on the National Register that they should be good mitigation suggestions. While the Navy did eventually offer a significant amount of money to work with the NPS Ferry House, the Town of Coopville and other reserve partners did not feel the mitigation was of enough benefit to the public and was not commiserate in Time. scale to the amount of adverse effect. Time. Joe, we would ask the ACHP to reconsider the, the mitigation um, Thank you. The size and the scope. Thank you. The council member from Port Townsend here. Oh, thank you. May you have a, three minutes. May I ask a question first? And that is, do you get the letters that we have been sending the Sorry. Navy in regard to this as part of the public record? Uh, unless we're not here to answer questions, but okay, I will no, answer this, this one. If you do not send it to the ACHP, we do not get a copy of it unless we know it was sent to the Navy and we specifically request a copy of it. So if you have letters, you would have to send them to us directly. Thank you very much for taking that time. Um, hello, thank you for allowing us to comment, allowing the public to comment. It's an important part of our democratic process. I'm Michelle Sandoval. I've been in Port Townsend uh, City Council for 18 years. Um, and I will try to speak very quickly. We started our comments and our communication with uh, the Navy once the Growler operation began um, some years ago. I was mayor at that time and my constituents were coming up to me on a constant basis asking me what was going on with the increasing noise with the flyer, with the uh, 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 continued flyovers. After many communications with the Navy, we were told that we were in an uninfected area. Uh, we asked, pushed, and uh, asked our uh, uh, state representatives and federal representatives to please allow us to be part of the public process for the expansion of the Growler program. And uh, we were, and I was thankful for that. In regard to Section 106, the same type of comments have been, been made to us that we do not count that our citizens, our community, is not affected um, by the noise. So I will just read from one of the three letters that we have sent to the Navy in regard to Section 106. Thank you for the opportunity to provide, um, that you provided in your July 12th letter to the City of Port Townsend to consult in the proposed area of potential effect for the continuation increase of growler operations at MAS with the island. The city asks you to expand your area of study as well as your definition of the indirect effects component of the APE. And we also ask you to consider using a different measurement of sound impacts. The area of study is too narrow. Your area of study does not include all of the historic areas over which the growlers fly. While the primary impacts um, areas on Whidbey are effect, affected by takeoff and landing operations. Many other areas of the Salish Sea, including our city, are affected by <coughs> flight operations. The city was founded in 1851 and contains two U.S. National Historic Landmark Districts, our downtown, our uptown, as well as our Fort Warden Historic Districts. The districts include approximately 40 separate listed pro properties and structures on the National Register of Historic Places. The noise impacts from the Grower operations impacts residents, visitors, our historic structures in the district, and therefore the city asks that the APA be expanded to include all historic areas within the training flight areas. The measurement of sound impacts does not take into account the rural natural quiet areas. The city believes that the flight operations, thank you, I will go ahead and put these forward. And I appreciate uh, that other people have mentioned Port Townsend. Thank you for considering this. Our next speaker 
speaker is Mr. Roy Zip, superintendent of Evie's Landing National Historical Reserve. You have three minutes. Knock him dead, Roy. Thanks, sir. Good evening. My name is Roy Zip, and I manage the National Park Service operation within Evie's Landing National Historical Reserve. I would like to thank the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation for the opportunity to comment. The reserve is administered as a federal, state, and local partnership. In deference to our state and local partners, and the private property owners that constitute 85% of the reserve, these brief remarks solely reflect the National Park Service's position on the potential effects to historic properties from the Navy's proposed expansion of EA-18G Growler aircraft at Naval Air Station Whidbey Island. National reserves are areas designated by Congress to preserve, protect, and interpret nationally significant natural, historical, and cultural features. Evie's Landing, which includes one of the earliest Euro-American settlements on Puget Sound, became the nation's first National Historical Reserve because of its long surviving maritime and land use traditions. The vistas, woodlands, and prairies of the reserve are much the same today as they were in the 1800s when New England sea captains came to Penn Cove and farmers to the land. Yet the reserve is far more than a snapshot in time. It is a working, changing rural community. For the past several years, we have worked closely with the Navy to clarify the issues, convey our concerns, and understand their constraints, which are sobering and significant given its critical role in ensuring our national defense. <coughs> the Navy has incorporated our concerns into their analyses, and we concur with the Navy's determination that noise from increased growler overflights will cause intermittent adverse effects to the perceptual qualities of the historic resources in the reserve. We appreciate the Navy's continued willingness to explore mitigation options and look forward to working with the Navy as they move to complete this planning process. Thank you, and this concludes my remarks. Our next speaker is Ms. Kristen Griffin, Executive Director, Amy's oh. Trust Board. You have three minutes. With local support, Congress established Evie's Landing National Historical Reserve, our nation's first and only national historical reserve, as an area to be protected and preserved for the public. I am speaking tonight on behalf of the Trust Board, a nine-member volunteer board established to coordinate management of the reserve according to an agreement between the National Park Service, Island County, the Town of Coopville, and the Washington State Parks. The Trust Board will submit detailed written comments by the January 3rd deadline. But tonight, my comments will review points that have remained important to the Trust Board throughout the consultation. First, Throughout consultation, there has been significant agreement. We all agree that the Central Whidbey Island Historic District is a significant historic property under the National Historic Preservation Act. It is without any question or doubt worthy of, pre worthy of protection. We all agree that this undertaking will have an adverse effect on the district and reserve. This is documented by the Navy's analysis and determination of adverse effect document. One key area where we have differed with the Navy is in our views on the scale of the adverse effect. The Trust Board feels the adverse effect is significant and that the loss will be felt keenly by the public. This led the Trust Board to propose significant historic preservation <laughs> mitigation projects that would provide lasting public access and benefit. 
Lastly, and most importantly, we feel that there are alternatives that could allow Navy operations to proceed but help avoid or minimize adverse effect. Throughout consultation, the Trust Board has consistently advocated that because the adverse effect is the result of a sharp increase in noise, the most appropriate way to avoid, minimize, or mitigate impact is to reduce noise from operations. The EIS provided viable alternatives for safely, uh, to safely accomplish its training mission without concentrating the adverse effect on Central Whidbey Island. This is still a response the Navy could be encouraged to take, whether through Section 106 or the EIS process. In conclusion, with the support of our community, the Trust Board has taken every opportunity to respectfully and faithfully consult on this undertaking. Although termination was a disappointment, we appreciate the Advisory Council's involvement to help find a workable outcome that ensures the protection and preservation of Central Whidbey Island's historic district and reserve. And we look forward to the Council's final comments. Our next speaker is Ms. Marion Atwood, representing citizens of Devi's Reserve. You have three minutes. My name is Marion Atwood, and I was a consulting partner in the Section 106 process. My organization, CORE, now working with the Sound Defense Alliance, uh, strongly objects to the way that the Navy has managed this 106 process that has ended in no agreement. From Captain Nordier to Captain Arnie, there was no genuine effort to avoid or reduce the effect, only to mitigate a very narrow range of Navy-approved mitigations that serve the interests of only the military. Uh, we agree, uh, we submitted many, many, many comments about the way that the noise was modeled and that this resulted in uh, an APE that was too narrow, leaving out the Connor and Port Townsend. Uh, the Navy did not explore measures to avoid or reduce harm to the historic pro property. They rushed to mitigation. Uh, we believe that the whole reserve is, is an historic property, all 17,000 acres not a particular building or a view shed. It's all a nationally registered district. Um, many of us uh, recommended operational reductions. My organization even offered a phased in reduction plan. An adverse effect is found when an undertaking may alter, directly or indirectly, any of the characteristics of a historic property that qualify the property for inclusion in the national, <coughs> national register. Is the Navy intending to degrade the reserve so that it will not qualify for inclusion in the National Register. The adverse effects include seven items. Number, number five is the introduction of incompatible visual, atmospheric, or audible elements. Additionally, <laughs> adverse effects may include reasonably foreseeable effects caused by the undertaking that may occur later in time, be, fur be farther removed in distance, or be cumulative. We don't feel that this has been appropriately addressed. I urge the ACHP to encourage the Secretary of Navy to consider operational mitigation that will avoid the effect or reduce it. No amount of money can substitute for the intent of and the inclusion on the National Register and its supposed protections on EB's Reserve and historic property. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. David Day, uh, representing himself. You have three minutes. When I first became a consulting party, I was uh, on the board of the Friends of EVs. I hope this reflects uh, their thoughts as well as my own. I want to thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. It's very tempting to share facts about health and hearing, facts about accident potential zones, facts about property rights and property values, facts about drinking water contamination, facts about single siting, or facts regarding the effects of excessive noise on other life forms that we share this amazing corner of the world with. But supposedly, there's a time and place for everything. This Section 106 process was supposed to speak to how historic properties would be adversely affected by the proposed expansion of the Navy's EA-18 growler program. 
The Navy says their analysis of potential adverse effects includes whether the undertaking would introduce or change visual, atmospheric, or audible elements that diminish the integrity of the property's significant historic structure features. In reality, this process effective, effectively puts the fox in charge of monitoring the hen house. And unfortunately, the Navy found very limited examples of how their undertaking might create adverse effects to this vernacular cultural landscape that is Central Whidbey Island. By rights, the time and place for the Navy to practice carrier landings in Central Whidbey should have ended 40 years ago <laughs> with the establishment of America's first historical reserve. Eby's Landing National Historical Reserve was established by Congress in November of 1978 to, and I quote, preserve and protect an unbroken historical record of Puget Sound exploration and settlement from the 19th century to the present. In the years since, the Navy has continued to promote and execute their mission on the Big Island. For many of those years, the Navy and the local population worked together to allow that mission to continue successfully and allow residents of Central Whitby to live in relative peace. The arrival of the Growlers changed that virtually overnight. It's difficult to understand how increasing the number of operations by supersonic aircraft doing low-level maneuvers over this historic area by roughly fourfold will not radically and likely permanently alter the cultural landscape of this more than 17,000 acre reserve. For most of us, it's already begun. How do we deal with the incompatibility of these conflicting missions? Certainly not by walking away from the dialogue. We hope that the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation will urge the Navy to reevaluate the way they look at the special corner of our country and develop and, impl impl develop and implement methods to both avoid and minimize the adverse effects of this undertaking by eliminating or at the very least limiting the number and frequency of operations. In doing so, the Navy will take a big step in maintaining the stated goal of being a Time. good neighbor hey. and a responsible member of the community. Thank you. Thank you. public who have pre-registered to speak. You will have two minutes each. Um, just to let everybody know, you cannot yield your time. Your time is your two minutes, but that does not include the ability to yield to another speaker. Um, and I am running my stopwatch, and if you go significantly over, I will kindly ask you to stop, so I will be the one to say that. So I'm going to call two names. So um, for those two individuals, please come down when your names are called um, and then be prepared. Would Michael Monson, and please forgive me if I do not pronounce your um, name correctly, and Joe Kunstler, please come forward and commence your statements in order. Joe, come on, 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 I'd like to thank the Historic Preservation Committee for this opportunity to address this issue in public. My wife and I moved to this area in 2003. One of the reasons was Eby's Landing National Historic Reserve. To live amongst the past and share this past with the thousands of visitors who come here every year is something that I treasure. Visitors I talk to are in awe of the efforts of this entire area to protect and preserve this national treasure. Civic pride is evident in the many groups that exist in this area to help the reserve function. The community raises thousands of dollars every year to protect and preserve the reserve and enhance our heritage. Residents love and cherish this national park. The Navy's attempt to destroy the very reason for this national treasure's existence is difficult to understand. What would the Navy folks think about the destruction of historical Navy ships? Calling money mitigation is not an idea to be considered. The Navy's denial of allowing thousands of citizens to walk the many trails must not go forward. Mitigation will only be the actual reduction of flights in this historic area. 
No new jets, no new flights. Is the only possible mitigation. Mitigation is fewer flights, not money. Money won't allow people to walk the many trails of Evie's land. Please don't allow the Navy to destroy this historic park with jet noise. Jets can be moved. Evie's Landing can't. Preserve the reserve. Thank you. Ready? Good evening, HGHP. Joe Kunzler here. I stand 525 feet away or closer according to Google Earth to EA 18Gs and formerly EA 6Bs conducting field carrier landing practice at all left Coopville as is the case with jets since January of 1967 with free A6A intruders from heavy attack squadron 123 uh, showed up on January 5th. Um, I'm not real happy with how these negotiations went. I believe with some of the sentiments spoken by Dr. Brooks and Commissioner Price Johnson that this community is divided. We've seen that tonight with inappropriate attacks on the media and uh, <laughs> fully condoned by Mayor Molly Hughes, who is a member of Sound Defense Alliance, uh, who has been colluding with Kristen Griffin and other parties to uh, sabotage these negotiations, in my opinion, uh, because they did not want mitigation. They wanted to move the jets for and you will be in receipt of emails such as that I will quote from briefly such as I continue to believe that the Navy's offers and deadlines are disrespectful to the section 106 process and we should not take the Navy's money and quote you community activists have known what projects we have been pushing and the amounts of money we have been asking for why are you just now telling me we should not take any amount of money? It would have been nice to know at the beginning of the process that no money would have been acceptable to you. Uh, I, I am of the view, Sound Defense Alliance and the EV's NHR Trust Board attempted to sabotage this process, and Kendall Campbell, the Navy's chief negotiator, or Dr. Allison Brooks, and I would add Commissioner Price Johnson have conducted themselves honorably and above board, and, and in good faith, considering the restrictions. And finally, I do support, very briefly on mitigation, I know what Red Fox is about to come up, I support easement and soundproofing funding. Yeah. 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 Would Donald Faber and Valerie Ruther come forward and commence their statements in order? Is Donald Farber here? All right, then I'm going to call up Ken Picard to speak after Valerie. Thank you. Uh, I live at 338 Fort Casey Road, which is um, in Cookville here, which is in the Navy flight path. In 1895, Sam and Anna Keith established what is today Rose Hip Farm. 20 years ago, my partner and I, after a long search, found this farm and knew we were home. Since that time, with the help of the EB Forever Fund in our community, we've invested thousands of dollars into restoring and maintaining the Keith Farm. In fact, we're on the Washington State Historic Farm Registry. On our farm, we grow organic vegetables, fruit, flower, flowers, and bees. It's a beautiful place, and Sam and Anna Keith would be proud. We have hundreds of customers who count on us for clean, healthy food. Our customers love coming to the farm. They love the feeling and the setting of it. They love the association. They can touch history with our yellow farmhouse and that big old barn. It takes them back in time. And just as important is the peace and quiet that they find at the farm. So now let's talk about farming under the jets. Have you all heard the growlers? If you've not stood in a field and had three or four growlers going overhead simultaneously, then you cannot imagine the impact. The decibels in our farm hit over 115. Whoa. 
<laughs> the National Institute of Occupational Health and Safety said, farm inside. <laughs> we can't farm inside. And we can't farm with contaminated water. We have an organic farm school on Whidbey Island, but the farmers coming out of that school are not farming in Central Whidbey because of the growlers. We who are farming in Central Whidbey, we've taken a thread of history. We're holding that. We've brought it forward and kept it alive today to keep it relevant. And the growlers threaten that. So I'm going to ask you to do what you can to protect our farms. Thank you. We please have Garrett Newkirk and Chris Falrath. Please come forward and commence with your statements in order. Good evening. My name is Garrett Newkirk, uh, North Whitby resident. Um, the Navy is proposing a mitigation for in the historic district. Uh, if you've spent any time on here, that is going to be impossible uh, due to the fact that these jets, they want to mitigate it to average 365 days a year. That is impossible uh, because you will not have people coming to walk, coming to stay, or coming to even go to any of the farms in Central Uh If you, depending on how you came onto this island, if you came on through the north end of the island, uh, we are one of the last large farms on North Whidbey uh, coming onto the island. Our patronage has dropped because of those checks. They are not the 117 decibel. They are 140 to 150 decibels. When they are turning in banking, uh, we've had a person have a heart attack in our field. We have had people uh, run out with their kids because of the amount of pollution from these aircraft, the amount of noise, it is intolerable. There is no way to mitigate this noise. The only mitigation is to move these aircraft to where it is a more appropriate place. Somewhere like 1.1 million acres, White Sands, New Mexico, hundreds of millions of acres. Why not move it there? not around communities and not around civilian populations. You want to talk about a National Historic Register? Uh, that noise stretches all the way up to Vancouver Island. I took my mom up there for a birthday. We sat down for coffee outside. You know what two people said to us? What is that noise? <laughs> Just fathom the distance that reaches. You won't have people. Time. Yeah. Your time is up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I prefer not to be filmed by any uh, personal citizen. Thank you very much. You need to stop filming. Excuse me. This is a public meeting. Are you going to attack them as well? Because if you remove me, you have to remove them. And I will happily accept We're not you. removing you. Someone has asked not to be filmed, and we wish you to respect her. I will not, not respect that filmed. under any circumstances unless they will respect that. We're all media. Take out. Take take out. Take out. You take me out, I print the home addresses of all those involved. Joe, do you have a press license? Do you have yeah. press credentials? The media, tell us who you are, jerk. I do not know where this will go. Chris, do you mind, since you don't want to be filmed, um, does, is Ronald Richards here, and does he mind being filmed? We want to hear from Okay, can Ronald, was, can Ronald, just, I, just I to was swap better, up? I was better looking, might it, be okay. It would be better <laughs> if you ask him to, to, to respect, Just to respect your concerns while we're trying to work this through, I don't want to come to have the meeting come to a stop. So, um, Ronald Richards, please come forward. 
I have the right, they have the I, right. I do want to hear from her. Yeah. Tough luck. We all live in a constitutional republic. Read the first amendment. First amendment. Where's the My, okay. um, my name is Ron Richards. I represent Save the Olympic Peninsula, an organization of some 2,200 people dedicated to preserving the unique environmental qualities of the, of the Olympic Peninsula. God damn the location of some very significant historical sites. The crown jewel of them all is Olympic National Park, a World Heritage Site, um, as well as Lake Quinault Lodge, Tattoosh Island, Fort Morden, to name only a few. These are all adversely impacted by the Navy's plans. <laughs> um, it's interesting that your webpage talks about of adverse effects as including introduction of incompatible visual, atmospheric, and audible elements. These are all essential, very important adverse impacts to the historical sites that I've mentioned. The underpinning of the National uh, Historic Preservation Act has to do with the economic impact that preserve, preserving these sites will have on local economies. People come to Olympic National Park and these other sites I've mentioned to appreciate the unique character of the of the environment there. Nothing worsens the experience of, of the visitors to these sites than sound and the visual impacts. They don't come there to see a war zone. They come there to experience the unique environmental qualities. So I urge you to urge the Navy to extend their areas far beyond anything they've covered here so far to exclude, like the council person from Port Townsend said, all the areas where these jets fly. And that includes from here all across all of Olympic National Park out to the Pacific Ocean. Thank you. Okay. The message is too important, and Joe, I appreciate your rights as a citizen. Okay. Thank you. I am uniquely qualified to be here. I want to thank all of you for being here. My name is Chris Fellrath. A little closer to the mic. Thank you. I'm uniquely qualified because I have been part of the military industrial complex for 36 years. I retired two years ago as a senior vice president of business operations of Boeing Commercial Airplane as a direct report to the CEO. I've had property in Admiral's Co. for 20 years, and unfortunately, I no longer trust the Navy. The Navy has poisoned my water on my retirement property, and it's taken a long three years of on onerous bureaucracy, and I still have no plan or no resolution date, even though a solution has been identified. So my question to all of us is, do we feel the Navy can be good stewards and honor the intention of our beloved preserve? No. And I would say no. No! They no. have poisoned our water. They have put us at risk. I offer the water to their families that they let my family drink, and I have friends who are deathly ill now from this poisoned aquifer, and it will not get better. We cannot allow this water to go any further, but it's going to go right into our sound, and to the earlier point hurt the creatures. We cannot trust them with the CO2, which will be in excess of 60,000 extra tons into our air, and also the hearing loss that we will all get. Even if we wear ear protection, our hearing will be adapted. Our economy will be destroyed. Little by little, in five years, as you've heard, this will no longer be a place to be. We'll lose our farms, our town, our residences, and our businesses, and our tourism. Safety is a whole other thing. 400% increase, statistically, we're going to have a crash. They're not pleasant, they're not fun. This is our island, all of us, including the Navy. We need an island solution for all of us. There are always solutions in aviation. They take time, they take compromise. We don't want reluctance, ignorance, or to be ignored. We have a shared destiny in this community. On top of that, this is our watch, ladies and gentlemen. This is our watch and our legacy. We beg for your help. Well, <laughs> would Sheila, Antonia, and Ann Harvey come forward? Is that she? 
Sheila. Is Sheila and Anne, Anne. here? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you also please turn that to us because you're here to provide comments to us, not Thank to them. Okay. You. Thank you very much. My name is Anne Harvey. I'm an educator and I've lived in Coop Hill since 1984. My life has been enriched by the beauty, serenity, and power of Evie's Reserve. Every day I'm struck by the incomparable majesty of this place, this historic reserve, our communities, our country's historic treasures. Thank you for being here to listen to our community's concerns. We value your time, your careful listening, and your formulation of recommendations to the Secretary of the Navy. It's my understanding, quoting directly from the ACHP website, that the goal of the NHPA, which established your council in 1966, is to have federal agencies act as responsible stewards of the nation's resources when their actions affect historic properties. This includes more than the structures, more than the landscape, more than the wildlife. It's the intersection of all of these elements that makes a place worthy of designation as an historic property. Step four of section 106, achieving a resolution, states the agency, in this case the Navy, explores measures to avoid, minimize, or mitigate adverse effects to historic properties. But what is an historic property, our 17,000 acre reserve, without people? Who will come to take in this landscape, to appreciate the historic structures, and watch the eagle soar if there's a fourfold increase in growler operations? Adverse effects, as defined on the ACHP website, are those that diminish the characteristics qualifying a property for inclusion in the National Register. Are we looking at a future when the diminished characteristics of EB's reserve means it no longer qualifies as an historic property? That is not acceptable. The Navy has not explored measures to avoid or minimize effects. In addition, their review of historic preservation impacts excluded the public and did not consider the rest of the impacted region, such as Laconner and Port Townsend. The Navy is not acting as a responsible steward. The Navy must explore measures to avoid adverse effects to EV's reserve. The only appropriate measures to, act to address these effects are reduced operations or move the ground. Your two minutes are up. Will Steve Bristow and Bob Wilbur come forward and commence with your statements in order? <clears throat> Steve Bristow and Bob Wilbur. I am Steve Bristow with Navy League. Welcome to the best island in the United States. A million dollars is on the table. If that number was five million or ten million or more, would that be enough? No! no. 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 And therein lies the rub. Power money. Many on one side of the table are aligned directly with that sentiment. The primary goal is to remove the growlers and the Navy from Whidbey. Am, am I right? No! no. 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 It's not about the reserve. Will any of your recommendations or actions reduce Navy operations on with me? And I know that the answer is no. Behind me, out the door, up and down the island, are tens of thousands of people who are not part of any activism, but are part of the full with me community, Dr. Brooks. They desire responsible parties to deal in good faith for a reserve that is everyone's reserve, not just the activist self-interest and not for politics. Of the history, of all the history and all the groups of Whidbey Island, the United States Navy has the deepest and longest pedigree, bar none. Saratoga Passage is one of the others, plus others are Navy names. The Navy predates Colonel Eby by nearly a decade. The OLF predates the reserve by 35 years. Possibly the top volunteer group for Eby's reserve is the Navy itself and their sailors. Sir, please find parties who speak for the whole community. This is not a shakedown. All mitigation re should reflect the Navy's history and commitment to the future. Thanks. 
not to get Please be mindful that others are being respectful to others when they speak, and we please ask you to do that the same for others who are speaking. All right. The Navy admits in its EIS that it is legally bound to use the best available science. Sadly, it isn't. Instead, of, instead it is clinging to old science a discredited, invalidated, 65 decibel day-night noise level. They say high annoyance begins at that 65 decibel level. Real science says no. It's more like 55 decibels. That is what the real noise experts in the U.S. and 90 other countries say. As, and an inconvenient truth for the Navy, because 55 decibels doubles loudness. Look, we all support good training for our Navy pilots. But does military convenience trump reasonable and doable alternatives? Alternatives that do not upend the supportive community and its preserver. Navy's Landing Historic <coughs> Preserve is an ancestral place, a place of quiet, solemn reunion with our past. It is not up for sale. Neither are those island ancestors who hand who settled and hand-carved its structures and now haunt its fields. Our preserve is not up for sale for a fistful of mitigation dollars. We may not be the decision makers, uh, but we are something they have to reckon with because we are their conscience. And, their con and as their conscience, we are whispering in their ear every day, louder and louder. Growlers move, this preserve cannot. Its visitors must come to it. Will the sound of war fit their expectations or destroy their experience? Of those decision makers we ask, who ask our sons and daughters to serve with honor, we ask them to do likewise and protect the reserve. Will Scott Smith and Stephen Swanson come forward and commence with their statements in order? And for the sake of our stenographer, please do state your name before you, you start, when you start speaking. Thank you. My name is Scott Smith. I am a retired naval officer, lived under the flight line for 10 years, prowlers and growlers. I know that noise can be annoying. I would ask the commission here to separate what is going to be EIS likely litigation with historical property. Because reality, gentlemen and ladies, the old app at Central Whitby is part of the reserve both geographically and chronologically. If you look at the founding documents that the Park Service has put on the table, it was recognized as part of that World War II buildup that doubled the size of Coopville, many farmers and citizens not only helped construct that base, they entered the Navy. Some were famous aviators like Harry Ferrier down at um, Oak Harbor who passed away last year. <coughs> so I would ask the commi committee to look at that aspect. It is part of the reserve and that history should be preserved. But the question is, why are we here today? Why couldn't an agreement be reached? And through a lawful public record search in Island County, I think we have seen that answer. There is one group on that uh, consulting party list whose stated mission is to remove all growlers from the Northwest. They know that would close the base, as their predecessor Wise knew when they went down to the Brack Commission in 1991 and told them, hey, close the base. So, yes, I, I, I understand the noise is an issue, historically has been an issue, but the Navy's been flying there for a lot longer than pretty much all of us own property. Nope. Nope. Lie. So, in that public search emails, there is statements to the effect, not for sale, those went to the entire consulting committee, and that was when a purported $4 million deal was on the table. That record, lawfully obtained, will be part of my written documents, and I will provide that to the committee. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Swanson. I'm a retired emergency room physician and very versed in toxicology. Um, I'm going to be talking about plumbing 
<laughs> the reserve, you know, and by the way, we, our families have been on the island since 1949. So, 100 feet of sand, gravel, are right below my feet. We have an unprotected aquifer covering the entire reserve all of Smith Prairie, including the outlying field. Anything that gets spilled gets into that mutual water supply. Water is life. Water is what the farmers use, what you all have in your drinking water, and it has been poisoned by the OLF uh, operations. They have found a hot spot near the runway with 27 times the EPA's advisory level. At that point, they stopped saying that they had no record of the styrofoam being used at the field. But we have waited now two years on bottled water, and it is hell on wheels to have your laundry, your dishwasher, and everything else putting toxins into your body every day. You can take a look at the plumbing in this building, which is on the reserve. All these buildings, they, uh, are supplied by Coopville's tap water. This tap water has three PFAS chemicals in it, and it is toxic. Um, we have measured, uh, I can't do this that fast, but I, will, I spent my time with the firefighting council and the toxic free futures people going to the state to get these chemicals banned in the state, it has been done, and the state has banned these chemicals in, in the 2019. The Navy has refused to remove them from the field. The longer I can include more people, the less people will be able to speak at the end. Would Tecla Cunningham and George Thawley please come forward and commence your statements in order? Thank you for the opportunity to address this meeting. My name is Tecla Cunningham. My husband and I own a historic farmstead near the National Park Service Ruble Farm in Coopville on Fort Casey Road. Our property consists of nine historic structures contributing to Evie's Landing National Historical Reserve, including a farmhouse, two barns, and several other outbuildings that date from the early 20th century. We are in the process of restoring these structures with the input, advice, and grant funding we have received from Evie's Landing. Renovating historic properties is a complex, expensive, and time-consuming undertaking. The human use of the reserve and its landscapes and, structure, landscapes and structures are fundamental to the mission and purpose of the reserve. The point of restoration and renovation is to bring these old buildings back to life by putting them back into a relationship with various human uses. Properties like ours and those of our neighbors like Jenny Farm and Rosa Farm <coughs> include a mixture, mixture of economic activities that all rely on the presence of people farm stays, weddings, events, and agriculture. This economic activity is what makes substantial investments in these structures possible. A sustainable use for our property includes sharing it with visitors. A visitor who visits historic properties is by their very presence participating in the preservation of these properties. They bring economic activity and their presence and interest in this special landscape is a fundamental part of the mission of the reserve. The Section 106 draft put out by the Navy asserts that jet noise will not cause direct structural damage to historic properties, but this is a red herring. Jet noise <coughs> impacts historic buildings by impacting their caretakers and crippling their potential uses. If you drive away the people who visit and care for these buildings, you drive away the means to take care of them. Evie's Landing is a 40-year public-private partnership that has succeeded in preserving an intact rural landscape that serves as a living, breathing <coughs> historical records for humans to enjoy. Please help preserve this special area by asking for no new flights. Thank you. Good evening. My name is George Stolle. On the advisory council of the Historic Preservation website, I noticed there are two active cases in Woodby Island. The first is the 
properties to be mitigated under Section 106. And second, the proposed increase of rail aircraft and aircraft operations at Naval Air Station Whidbey Island. The proposals by the Department of Defense and the Navy to date on the two pending active cases before the ACHP contain no real attempt to compromise between the Department of Defense and the Central Whidbey community. The lack of urban sprawl and bright commercial lighting in our community that has drawn residents and thousands of visitors to Central Whidbey each year is also the stated reason for the Navy to have 80% of total Growler aircraft carrier landing at our well of Coopville, next to EB's reserve, with almost no land buffer. The noise will be on top of us and be constant. There can be little mitigation with a fourfold increase, 24,000 operations in Growler aircraft. How do you shield buildings, visitors, and inhabitants from such an increase in aircraft noise and damage? Do you soundproof historical buildings? Place signs on roads, beaches, and prairie that people will counter harmful levels of noise? How do you unring the bell of decibel damage? There are alternatives, such as other training fields for touch and go practices and airplane technology upgrades if the Department of Navy chooses to see them and to seek the consent of the citizens they protect. Thank you. Would Michael, so sorry, Ferrari and Fran Inhertz come forward and commence your statements in order? Just like the fairy book. Fairy, good, thank yeah, you. Very simple. Hebe's Reserve, well, Reserve is 17,500 acres, all of which shall be impacted by the proposed Navy plan. The lower Skagit people lived here nurtured this land and had nine village sites here for over 10,000 years. That's their heritage. The first American settlers came here almost 170 years ago. 40 years ago, local, state, and federal people and agencies worked together to protect and preserve the history of this special place. When the first and only National Historic Reserve was created, that's our heritage. We all work hard to preserve and protect the open spaces and historic sites and structures within the reserve. The open pastures and farms and our historic small town were never intended to be as an ideal accident potential zone. Heaven forbid that any Navy jet should ever crash anywhere, but we all know what APC means and stands for. And we should all now know that Central Whidbey Island homes, our schools, our hospital, our town, our parks, our people, our water, and our economy, and our historic sites soon shall be part of a danger zone. Do our farms and public lands and our sparse population density make our citizens and our heritage more expendable? Statistics may support that argument, but what does humanity support? I am on two committees, public organizations, on the board of directors, and I speak here this evening as a, a private citizen. My name is Michael Ferry, that's F-E-R-R-I. My name is Fran Einters. I'm a local farmer at the Jenny Farm and also a board member of the Trust Board of Eby's Landing National Historical Reserve. I'm asking the ACHP tonight to please recommend to the Secretary of the Navy that this expansion project stops altogether due to the irreversible adverse impact on the congressionally de designated Eby's Landing National Historical Reserve. Alternatively, direct the agency to step back through the mitigation process, but this time with the objective of seriously considering decreasing operations and mitigating the damage. Section 106 mitigation began in earnest in August of this year. For three months, parties worked in good faith to come up with a roadmap and were unable to reach an agreement until the Navy terminated negotiations. 
it's easy to conclude that mitigation simply isn't possible. But we have a skilled negotiator in the CO, Captain Arnie, and participants well versed in 106 like Allison Brooks and Kristen Griffin, and highly, in, in, excuse me, highly intelligent and motivated people like Mayor Bali and Commissioner Helen and Congressional Representative Larson and his staff, all willing to find a solution. Wow. So please recommend to the Secretary of the Navy that this expansion project stops altogether due to the irreversible adverse impact on Evie's Landing National Historical Reserve, or alternatively, direct the agency, in this case the Navy, to step back through the mitigation process, but this time with the objective of seriously considering decreasing operations and mitigating the damage. With Karen, Rainey, and Angie Homo. Hom Thank you. Please come forward and commence your statement in order. There, in 2005, the Navy sought to introduce growlers in place of prowlers. Their environmental assessment on pages 42 and 43 made the following assurance. Operation of the EA-18G and replacement of the EA-6B will result in less noise exposure to the local community due to better performance as a newer aircraft and a steeper climb-out rate. It thereby reaches a higher altitude more quickly, which reduces the noise exposure to the community." End quote. The Growler's noise levels has proven those assurances counterfactual. <laughs> Jet engine thrust is a measure of its high velocity kinetic energy discharge, and the Growler generates 35% more thrust than the Prowler. Result? unbearable high level of decibels. A Citizen's Guide to Section 106 Review published by you, the ACHP, and available on your website, identifies the grounds for ACHP intervention. Under adverse effects on page seven, the fifth example, as has been repeated previously this evening, is the introduction of incapable excuse me, introduction of incompatible visual, incompatible atmospheric, or incompatible audible elements. A fourfold increase in growler use will be harmful to the reserve and the region for many reasons. The growlers are disruptive to the reserve sound escape. Exposure to growler jet noise is a known health hazard. We ask Navy planners to please seek alternatives to the planned growler operations on Whitby Island. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Angie Homola and thank you for this opportunity. Evie's Landing National Historical Reserve is the only one of its kind in the nation. Its collaborative formation by public and private and local, state, and federal parties is a testament to the will of Americans to preserve and protect our nation's history. As an architect and former member of the Historical Review Board and former Island County Commissioner, I played an active role in the development and adoption of design guidelines for the preservation of this valuable heritage treasure. I fully recognize the importance of a strong military. As the wife of a 25-year naval aviator, I know that our sailors and soldiers do not want to destroy the very people and place they are dedicated to protect. The Navy's appropriations and actions are directed by our elected congressional officials, 
who appoint councils to review proposals and to advise them of the pro project's consequences and adherence to law. I respectfully urge this council to adhere to the National Historic Preservation Act. The accuracy and depth of your study on this proposed federal project and your reporting to the Secretary of the Navy and ultimately the Secretary of the Interior, Congress, and the President on its wide-ranging impact will greatly influence the outcome of the record of this decision and thus the degradation or the preservation of this historical reserve. It is your duty to assure that before any recommendation is made, all steps outlined in that act are followed, including but not limited to a full review by the National Endowment of Humanities, full participation by all consulting parties, including tribal nations, a full and ex comprehensive EIS that includes platforms operating in tandem out of NASB and all affected historic preservation areas, the environment, and the people that are impacted. I ask that you advise of the true adverse effects of the Navy's proposal and what it will have on the reserve and our immediate and affected communities, and that further study before a record of decision is made. Based on current impacts, a no expansion recommendation is all that can apply under the Act. Thank you. We are now going to use the remainder of our time for, um, for those who have indicated the desire to speak by um, being a walk-in. So the cards have been given to me, um, and we'll do it the same, two by two. Uh, you will each have um, two minutes to speak. We need to be out of here by 8 p.m. It is 6.28, so I believe we'll be able to get through all those who have registered to speak. So will Vicki Robin and Sharon... Gouthier, my apologies, please come down and, uh, and uh, start your, <laughs> yes, please come down and speak, thank you. Hello, I'm Vicki Rawlin, thank you for this opportunity, I'm an author. Um, of two books on sustainable living. I live down in Langley. I'm not directly affected by the jets, but I have a, a deep concern for agriculture, farming, and sustainability. And uh, I invite you to take a look at this group full of heroes, hometown heroes, people who love our community enough to come to areas like this and show up in so many ways to volunteer and serve on boards as elected officials, build businesses, and on and on and on. You are not looking at a bunch of NIMBYs looking to protect their property rights. You are not looking at a bunch of troublemakers who take pleasure in spending their time resisting everything. You are looking at members of a community of people and landscapes and wildlife and histories. Wendell Berry refers to a woven community as a membership. On the dramatic increase of operations at the OLF, we have predicted that many members of our community will sell their homes and leaves, will shutter their businesses, will stop farming. So the question is, what is Section 1064? Is it just the buildings? The National Historic Reserve um, is an inseparable uh, unit of structures, landscape, and people who built the towns and farms over century plus. People who live here today and people who will live here tomorrow. It is the visitors who have come, come now, and will come. It is a membership. Perhaps you simply think of the reserve as a museum, relics of the past, kept in good shape for education of people now and in the future. If so, others have spoken to the measures we believe are necessary to keep these relics in good shape. But if you go ahead, even if you protect buildings, this may end up as a mausoleum, a burial place for a life that has ended. If people cannot live, learn, work, and play under the intensity of the expanded operations, oops, so what will it be? A membership, a museum, or a mausoleum? Thank you. Gothier, president of Whitby Audubon Society. Evie's Landing National Historical Reserve is not just the historic buildings that are here. 
It's a historical and cultural setting that includes the landscape, the water, the sky, and the sounds of the area. Crockett Lake, which lies within the reserve, has been designated a Washington State important birding area using an internationally agreed upon criteria. Island County and Washington State have also designated Crockett Lake as critical habitat. Over 200, over 200 bird species are there. It's a critically important migration stage. This migratory flyway has been in the reserve for generations. I'm sorry. These birds were part of the daily life of the native tribes and the early settlers of the reserve. The activities of these birds contribute to the rhythm of the life here and the part that, of what makes this historic, a historical area that our nation has decided to preserve. The Navy has cherry-picked studies of noise on birds using parts of studies rather than whole studies and using studies that are not representative of our local species. There are many studies that point to birds' avoidance of noisy environments and the resulting changes in breeding success, ability to find food, etc. Um, the birds are not able to sound average. They um, tend to move away and not do well when they um, in a noisy environment. We really believe that the growlers will have a negative pack impact on the avian life that's part of the historic Crockett area, Crockett Lake area, and um, also on the sound environment of the reserve. Thank you, and we know that the visitors to the reserve expect a quiet, um, quiet environment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.